Welcome back to the Transfer Portal Podcast presented by No Context CFB. Check out our website, thetransferportal.com. Nope. Yeah, the Transfer Portal CFB.com. Goodness, I'm bad at this. Uh, we have links to all of our stuff and check out our TikTok because I don't think it's a link there. I'll say it right here. It's at Transfer Portal CFB. T-Portal I'm Joshua Ritt. CFB. I'm bad at this. Great start. I thought I had this. All right, whatever. I'm Joshua Ray and Millie. <laughs> you know what? Scuff starts or still starts. Yep, starts or starts. Uh, we got several great topics, and which will go a lot smoother than that intro. So how's Hopefully. everyone doing? I'll start with uh, on my screen. I'll start with Dave. How are you doing, man? Yeah, I'm doing all right. You know, college college tournaments just started. Excited about that. IUPUI is playing with five guys right now and keeping it close somehow. But yeah, I'm doing well. Man, I just just because I like chaos, IUPUI, let's get it. Uh, <laughs> Andrew, how are you doing, man? Doing fine. I don't know how IUPUI is in this game. Yeah, that's actually nuts. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, you, you have fans in us, so we'll see how this goes. And um, hopefully players. Oh my yeah, god. I, mean, I could probably throw up some threes for them for sure. I could throw them up, they won't go in, but I can throw them up. Yeah. I could I could give them I could give a nice hard foul. Chris my Pat. friends say I play like Pat Beth. So eh, <laughs> yeah, fair enough. All right. Uh starting out on things, we'll start with a little bit of a relevant topic going on right now between the between conference USA and the Sunbelt Conference. So Marshall, Old Dominion, and Southern Miss are leaving Conference USA for the Sun Belt, and realignment happens all the time. The thing is, though, that these three schools said, yeah, we're leaving uh, for this upcoming season. And uh, Conference USA said, um, no, the contract says you have to give us enough time. And cl- clearly, based on the contract, they did not give the conference enough time. The schools are saying, hey, we're willing to pay the 1.5, it's reported $1.5 million fee per school. But the conference is saying uh, we are going to go to court after the 2022, 2023 season. Um, so guys, uh, what is your initial reactions to hearing this news? We'll start uh, Andrew with this time. I mean, the, the conference USA is just going out sad. Like if, if we had to group up the group of five conferences into tiers, I would say the upper tier is the American slightly below is the mountain West. And then I'd say kind of right now, slightly blows the Sun Belt. I mean, who cares about the Conference USA? Yes, they have some good teams, but I, I think Sun Belt's kind of above. And if a conference, or excuse me, if a program has a chance to upgrade, why wouldn't they? It makes sense for both parties, the Sun Belt and the program. Yes, it kind of sucks for the CUSA, but they're they're just making an entire media debacle out of this. I think that they're kind of going a little far at this point. You just kind of have to realize this isn't really worth it. Just focus your efforts on getting new teams into the conference so that you can keep yourself a conference. Because right now you're struggling. I mean, we've seen what New Mexico State is a possibility. Liberty is a possibility. I think they're not 100% in, but they're like really close. And I'm forgetting, isn't like Sam Houston State? Yeah, it's Uh, Jacksonville State, Liberty, Sam Houston State, and New Mexico State. Yeah. So they're getting four, like, I mean, for basketball, great for football. Yeah. Uh, Liberty is the only really appealing team. Sam Houston State is pretty good FCS wise, and Jacksonville yeah. State as well. But like, you're losing one of your some of your top schools. I mean, to be fair, picking up Jacksonville State, make sure they have Florida State on their record or on their schedule, yeah. and yeah, for sure. You know, give yourself a little bit of relevancy. But I, I don't know. I mean, with also the news coming out that the schools are getting restraining orders against the the conference if i remember that correctly that's kind of sad uh but it's it's kind of necessary for these programs they just want to be like hey you know we feel like we can either make more money or we can do better things in the Sun Belt. that's kind of on the conference usa so i i don't really know why the conference usa is going so far into this realignment happens as josh said every few years this isn't abnormal it is kind of abnormal for a conference to be losing this many teams in this short amount of time but you know you got to adapt because if you don't uh, die yeah for sure um and i know i I, for me i think that if they're going to pay the fine then that's going to be the end of it and i know that these teams are leaving for the sun belt because of the fun belt games that's why like Fun belts on, I think, Thursday, Friday nights, and ESPN, you get the general gamblers like me that'll bet on it. And like it's just better exposure for these kids coming in. Where if 
instead of playing in the Conference USA, when you're Marshall and you're Old Dominion, you're like, oh, maybe we can compete for the Conference USA championship and get in, like, the Texas Bowl or whatever. But now you go into the Sun Belt and you're playing good teams like Coastal Carolina. As you said before, I think it's, for me, the Sun Belt and the MAC are essentially the same. The Sun Belt is the Southern MAC, I feel like. Yeah. Where it's about as even. And like these kids are going to get exposure on ESPN, ESPN too. And you're playing good teams like Coastal Carolina and Louisiana Lafayette. And I just think that it's, it's good for the schools. And if they're going to pay those fines to leave the conference USA, that should be that conference USA is getting their money and they should just leave it alone. And I think it'll fizzle out after this season. I think it'll, they'll do something under the table. Something will, something will end and it'll be good to go. Yeah. And conference USA, uh, just looking at them historically, man, they've had good teams in this conference. They had TCU, they've had Louisville, they've had UCF, and they all realized, oh, we need to leave and leave now. And in Conference USA, they, their TV deal is so bad. Like they're on Stadium and yeah. Facebook Live. And, and this isn't like illegal Facebook live streams. These are like legitimate, the games are being shown on Facebook Live. That's awful. As like, as like Dave was talking about, like even if the game was like, on ESPNU on like a Thursday night, that's a lot better than stadium for free and some other, no offense to stadium, like there's still stuff, but they're not, yeah. And the the big thing too, is that schools have gotten punished for announcing like at the proper time that, Hey, we're leaving. We're letting you know we're leaving. Okay. A good example is James, James Madison leaving the colonial and Stony Brook leaving the American. Mm -hmm. They let the conferences know, Hey, we're leaving. It might've been a little closer than the conferences wanted, but they still gave them enough time. But the thing is, the conference has said, yeah, and in the contract is that we can ban you from any uh, conference postseason tournaments. So a lot of teams, I think, I believe it's the swim team for Stony Brook or something. They were given notice uh, two weeks before their their conference tournament was about to start. And yeah. they can't do anything about that. So for these teams, like they can still make like their postseason, like, like James Madison, if they want to make March Madness or something but they would have, have to have a really good regular season to do that. And I just, that's not right. And that's actually like, not true. Yeah. James Madison and Stony Brook, the basketball teams were banned from the conference. Oh tournament. yeah. That's, yeah. So Stony yeah. Brook was the favorite cause I'm from Long Island. So like I kind of follow Stony Brook a little bit. Stony Brook was the favorite to win the America East this year. And then they announced halfway through the season with like two weeks to play, three weeks to play. You can't play in the conference tournament. You're not allowed to play in the NCAA tournament and the kids just gave up and it's just, it's not fair to them. It's and in football, I guess I don't really see how. Uh, I don't think it'll hurt you in football because really, there's 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 the Sun Belt Championship game. The CUSA uh, does CUSA even have a championship game? Like I don't even know. Yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah. it was okay. uh, UTSA Western Kentucky this year. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yep. Yeah, but yeah, team. like that stuff shouldn't matter. Like Oklahoma and Texas are leaving. Like, and in theory, the Big Twelve could be like, we're not letting you in, but they're smart enough to not do that. And I know, like, yeah, like, you can't compare. Well, you can still compare. James Madison is still, like, across most of their athletics, they're really, really good. Mm -hmm. You can't just, if you're smart, you let them play. But it is what it is. So it's just a bad situation all around. Um, So we'll see how that goes. Pulling for the teams, hopefully see how that goes. On to something that has something to do with teams and getting jolted around and moved around and getting trolled a little bit is uh, recruits committing. uh, Specifically... You know, y'all know, like with co- recruits, their hats, they got them all on the table. And it used to be like, it used to be like, oh, yeah, I'll pick this hat, put it on. Some players, you know, like they're starting to do like the switch around with the hats and everything. Uh, the one that was recent was a uh, Trevante Citizen, I believe that's his name, you know, four star running back. He like, he had Auburn, Florida, LSU, Miami, went back to LSU and finally pulled out another Miami hat from the table. So, um, I'll throw this one up to you guys. You guys are talking about it more. Um, so what's your thoughts on recruits uh, trolling teams? I mean, I, I kind of have both sides of the argument here. For one, it's great content. It gets your name out there. You know, maybe a Miami place is like, oh, this this guy was funny. He, he chose our schools over these other ones. Let's maybe, you know, cook up an NIL deal. But then there's also the other. It's like these coaches – at the other schools, they spent months upon months, probably years to an ex- extent, you know, scouting this guy, you know, f- forming a relationship. And then like 
Miami's not even like super rivals. I mean, Florida, but outside of Florida, Miami's not really rivals with Auburn. It's it's like, why do Auburn like that? I mean, to be fair, in Auburn's current climate, who wants to go there? But that's a completely different aspect to think about. But with this, it's like, I feel like you're kind of doing a little much. It's, I mean, back in the day, and by back in the day, I mean a few years ago, you know, you would have the occasional, you know, pick up one hat and then you pick up the other one. That school that you picked up that you didn't actually go to was a rival. That's good because then you're trolling the rival of the school that you're about to go to. But when you're, when you're doing that to random schools, it's, I just feel like that's a little tacky. I mean, yeah, I, yeah, I got that. Yeah. I mean, I think it is if you do uh, like the four hats, a little bit overkill. If you do one, you flip it fine. Yeah. But I mean, you got to kind of take with a grain of salt because they're high school kids and they're trying to be funny and they're like, Oh, I'm going to like, Oh, like I did, like, let's say like these, cause they're just trying to mess around. I feel like, yeah. Like if in like, it just would be kind of a bummer if you're sitting there and you're a coach, you recruit this kid, you really like him and you had got good conversations and the player has good conversations with you. And then he puts the hat on, flips it off and puts on like the Miami hat. If As a recruiting coach, I'm sure that's happened so many times to you where it's at the point where you're kind of like, whatever, he didn't come here. Screw him. Like, good luck where wherever you go. But yeah, I mean, they're, they're kids. If I were good enough to play football, I probably would also do something like that and try to be funny. But yeah, I don't, the four, the four hats is definitely overkill. Yeah. I, I, I wanna, see oh, go ahead, Andrew. Oh, okay. Uh, there's another example, not like this, but there was a, a kid coming out of high school. He had, I can't remember which schools there are big 12 schools. So he has like two or three hats on the table. I think picks one up and then he takes his shirt off. There's a school logo under that. And then he takes another one off and then it's like, black duct tape made to be the texas tech t and then he takes that off and on his back is blue painted ku and he goes to kansas like that is i love the creativity that's too much that's too much yeah i agree i'll be honest i love it all (laughs) like i'm like yeah whatever it's fun like is it overkill sometimes yeah but at the same time it's 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 fun it's entertaining and for the coaches too i feel like also they they know like the day of or like the kids probably giving them a call already so the coach is like okay whatever it's just for the show um it kind of reminded me travis hunter when he committed i remember watching because i was able to i caught it the i caught it like 30 seconds late i was able to rewind and watch it he had like the auburn hat georgia hat and fsu hat on the table he like they were on a stage he like threw them off the stage not like not like how you throw something to the crowd, like here, guys. No, he's like, nah, get this out of here. And then he caught the Jacksonville State hat for the crowd. I was like, I mean, like that was kind of cool because like the crowd was getting into it, so like the environment was cool. I don't know, so long as it's just entertainment, just gives something to talk about. And just reminding me, I gotta bring this up for creative things. Deontay Anderson, four star. He was a four star safety committed to Ole Miss in 2016. Do you guys do you guys know that name? And do you know how he committed? If you do know this name. Don't know the name and I don't know how he committed, but I'm okay. He has tra- he since transferred to Houston, became a linebacker. He's pretty solid. He he's probably gonna be like a cool special teams guy. He committed by skydiving. He went up there <laughs> and he like dove down and they did like this like it was actually like pretty good for like 2016. It was like virtual rat virtual VR like these like so it'd be like rings that you like dive through. And he's supposed to like, oh, if he dives through this ring, maybe he's committing there. But then he'd miss them, right? He'd avoid them. And he finally like landed in like the Ole Miss one. And it's like, he committed to Ole Miss. And so like, was it kind of weird? A little, but was it kind of cool? Yeah, the guy went skydiving. So I don't know, as long as the guys have fun with it and they're not like super disrespectful, like even with Travis Hunter tossing them off, like he was like giving like, oh yeah, this school is pretty cool. Nah, at least he like gave them their flowers. So like, at the end of the day, it's all fun. Just don't be too disrespectful. I'm not sure about like blue paint on your body or duct tape or whatever. Don't put duct tape on your body because that hurts. <laughs> um, but yeah, like it's all fun and games. But sometimes it's a little much and we go, eh, I won't like this video. And you just kind of keep scrolling. So that's because that's where you see these things. <laughs> I'm just laughing because Andrew is just like, <sighs> for all you people listening on audio he's just kind of dejected not a fan of it oh fair enough fair enough 
<laughs> uh, moving on to something else, we we tweeted this out earlier, and we put out on all our social medias talking about uniforms. We had favorite uniforms and least favorite uniforms, and like there were a lot of great options I saw, and then some people were um, a little over the top, like saying like Yeah, Texas A and M's is bad," but I don't know. And then bland. Yeah, in the past, they've had bland ones. Yeah, bland, but like they were saying, like the person, someone said, like these are awful. It's like, uh. <laughs> anyways, yeah, let's just let's get into it, guys. I just want to hear maybe a handful of your. I've got one for each, just because I might go a little long, but I'll let you guys go for it. I'll start with Dave this time. Give me your. Let's go. Let's be negative then positive. Give me your least favorite, then your favorite right. uniform or like All right. uniform. So that the worst jerseys in the history of jerseys are those lime green Michigan State State jerseys, <laughs> which were an abomination and should never <laughs> have been put out. Um, if you're listening to the pod, you're not familiar, look it up, and you will be shocked they actually wore those in a real game. I can't believe they wore those. Um, I have a couple, actually. One that I really, really didn't like, and it's probably because it stings in my brain, was when Ohio State played Penn State a couple years ago and they were all gray. I didn't really understand that because they like, they did a, I think it was supposed to be a blackout that game, but then they were gray and then nobody in the stadium more black. It was super confusing. I just didn't understand it. Um, Was that the JT Barrett game? uh, I think it was. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. It was, that was my freshman year. So that was, yeah, that was a JT Barrett game when Franklin blew another game. (laughs) <laughs> I think it was the first of like a bunch that he blew. Yeah, that yeah, one was I rem- strong. I remember that specifically because it's like, man, this would have been like a top all time classic game, but the uniforms ruin it. Yeah, I was there too. Yeah. That one hurt. The game started with a Saquon uh, kickoff touchdown. Yes, sir. And I was, and I left the stadium and I was like really sad. And lady, some lady was like, can you like not be so sad so I can enjoy this? And I was like, no, but I'm going off the rails right here. Um, <laughs> another. Jersey. This one's kind of questionable because I used to like it. I go really back and forth. The Maryland flag jerseys when they wear those. They're like I think it was cool when I was 12 and I was like, oh, this is the coolest thing ever. And now I look at it, I'm like, there's way too much going on. Like I can't focus. Um, all right, then we'll go to good jerseys. We'll go to good jerseys now. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot who tweeted at our main account. It was a San Jose State account. What was Shout out San Jose State. Yeah, they had – I'd never seen these jerseys before. It was San Jose State Spartans football talk at Spartans FB talk. They tweeted out these black San Jose State jerseys that I'd never seen before. I think they're so nice. They have the blue helmets, just beautiful. Great jerseys. I wish they – I hope they wear them again. Um. And I think Baylor as a whole, the way that they've been put out the last couple of years, that green and yellow fits very nicely. And then I'll finish. One of my favorite jerseys are when Hawaii wears the Rainbow Warrior ones with the oh, rainbow, yeah. the rainbow yeah. print. Yeah, those you those can't miss. They should wear those every single game. And they're the Rainbow Warriors, so they should just just do it. Hawaii's always had nice jerseys, especially in like the Timmy Chan, Cole McDonald jerseys. They should just just rock them. Let's hope they get a stadium so they can actually wear those nice jerseys yeah. on something. Good grief. Oh uh, yeah. Andrew, how about you, man? I know I I I I like the jersey that you put out there for both for least favorite and uh most favorite. Wait, mine? Yeah, I've seen like when you like put it in. We have a chat oh, for people. Yeah. people. We have a chat and like the stuff we said, like, love those. Dave, you too. Yeah. Um, I'll I'll start with least favorite. Two colors that should never go together on Dang near anything. Green and orange. Colorado State, I'm talking to you. What the heck were you thinking when you put green and orange together? Orange has no correlation to the Colorado State program. I don't know why you thought that was a good idea. That sucks. I mean, whoever your design person is, whoever comes up with those designs, fire them into the sun. That (laughs) sucked. Um, And then I'm going to come back home for this one. Minnesota, I'm... You it, back in like the early 2000s, they had this jersey where it's just a white jersey. So, OK, not that bad, but they have M's on each shoulder and then they connect the Minnesota M across the chest. Oh, 
Oh, I he remember those. So ugly. Yeah. Like I, I try not to slander my college because I love it. That sucks. That <laughs> actually sucks. It, it just looks. I don't know. It doesn't look like a football jersey. It looks like there's something wrong with your jersey, and you need to go back to the sideline to fix it. It, it's disgusting. It's a disgrace to everything about Minnesota. And I try and burn those out of my retinas from every time I see them. Uh, but now let's go positive. Cause I feel like I was a little too negative. Uh, Utah Rose bowl. They knocked it out oh, of the park. This yeah. was, this was one of the best Rose bowl uniform matchups we've seen in a long time. The only thing that would have made the Rose bowl better is if one of either Utah or Ohio state didn't have red as their primary color. So we could have the Rose bowl stadium split. That would have been, Perfect. Like if it was Utah versus, uh, I don't know, the Northwestern. Ew. Uh, That'll never happen. <laughs> Penn State like, would have looked nice, the Navy, but they'll never get there yeah. either. Or maybe like, uh, man, everybody on the East is red. Um, yeah, everybody on the East is red. Michigan, yes. done, Michigan probably would have won, won the maze, though, I think. Yeah, yeah I feel like the gold would have been good, though. Or, yeah, I guess Maze is – wait. I can't remember different intro colors. I'm dumb. Um, maze and blue. Yeah, maze and blue. I don't know why I was thinking maze and gold because I was thinking maroon and gold with Minnesota. But, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, uh, yeah that, that would have been sick. Utah just knocked it out of the park. The simplicity of the jersey, just having clean lines and the numbering was really good. But then having the little rows in between the U's, perfect, was my favorite uniform this year. And then, once again, I'm going to go home. Dave talked about his uh, Ohio State with the Grays. I'm going to talk Minnesota with the Grays. We used them against Ohio State, and they are clean. They are clean. We usually use them with some sort of a gold helmet, like a gold chrome, but I I just think it looks so clean. And then, I don't know. I like simplicity, but I also don't like just bland like i hate nebraska i i think nebraska sucks so i guess we're just gonna go back to negative <laughs> nebraska's suck it's just red and white with a common red n yeah. on on the helmet that sucks i don't hate penn states but i mean just plain white helmets i guess since you're the only team in the country that does that i don't hate it but i like when they put the logos on it when they wear the throwbacks they have like a yeah. little more of a white trim on the shoulder on the on the sleeves and they throw the numbers on the helmet it looks oh, really yeah. nice i yeah. think those are better than the, there's not the Penn State jersey's nothing. It's just, I mean, it's clean. It's a classic, but it's just blue on white yeah. with the black cleats. Yeah, I I would say Penn State's definitely better than Nebraska. And honestly, I don't like Michigan's. I I just don't like Michigan's. It's weird yeah. to me. Like having the Wolverine claw come uh, like across your head. That like I guess that's cool to some people. I just don't like it. Yes, it's it's historic and it's nostalgic. You know, you remember the the late '90s Wolverines. You remember Desmond Tower, Charles Woodson, but the uniform isn't good to me. And then I also don't like Texas's for some reason. Like the 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 white with the burnt orange. I'll give. I like Texas's. That's one thing I'll give them. I like you got nice jerseys. And then you could even go Tennessee. Orange is just like isn't really a football color, but I think Tennessee's are nice too. But Tennessee's jerseys only work when they win. When they're like three and nine, they look awful. <laughs> that that is true. A lot of like I think Tennessee's one of the few programs, like they're good when they're winning, but they the the jerseys are bad when they suck because you see the T and you're like, oh, that's a it's a storied program, Tennessee. Mm-hmm. And then when they suck, it's like, ew. Yeah, they had what the that, heck is that like when Peyton Manning wears I'm like, look at that jersey, it's a nice jersey. And then they had that like Italian guy, I forgot his name. Yeah, I know he's an Italian dude because there's not a there's not a lot of them. Garantano. Yeah, 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 yeah. Garantano, yeah. he, he was sucks. Awful. He was so bad. And I was like, these jerseys suck. Dude, yeah, had, was you could throw him. the ball a million miles because he could throw the ball a million miles. And it's like, oh, we could. Every coach says like, we can work with that. And then they get it, and then they're like, oh, he throws out the back of the end zone from the exactly. 15. Yeah, Touchback. It was awful. I just thought of this theory right now. So like, you guys, Andrew mentioned like. And Dave, you also mentioned like you don't like Texas A&M, you don't like Michigan's, you don't like Penn State, Texas, Tennessee, Nebraska. Was there another like old classic? Whatever. I think those uniforms only look better on standard definition. I don't think they look good in HD. You put it like back in the day. It's like, oh, yeah, these are cool yeah. colors. 
and now it's like jerseys. oh now we have to see it and it might also just be a nostalgia factor but when like when you see it from like those back in the day ones it's like oh like tommy frazier breaking through the florida defense that was awesome and the jersey looks cool i just think now that we can like see it in our 4k surround like those weird tvs that like have like the arc and everything it's like oh oh that's nasty that's disgusting when the jersey technology has come too far <laughs> technology has come too yeah, far it has it's ruined the jerseys oh man I'll touch on mine. Uh, I just went with one for each just to keep it nice and simple. I'll start with my favorite because my worst, my least favorite has a longer story. My favorite is the BYU classic Royal away jersey. So that's the white with like the Royal like blue numbers and like the letters and what everything because like that was what they wore back in the day. And then they brought it back and it looks it just looks really, really good. It's super cool. The worst was um. Florida a ms illegal jerseys. Oh, yeah, um, with the white numbers. Yeah, oh. white numbers on white jerseys. There was like Those a green. Were awesome. What are you talking about? No, the green and orange. And I, I say just be, the green and orange, like thin outline on the numbers. I say just because it's so hard to see the numbers sometimes, especially yeah. because the white on white. And it was just like looking and you'd be like, uh, I think that's a 15 or that's an 18. You couldn't really tell. And it just kind of looks like unfinished jerseys like someone just forgot to like fill in the stuff but the craziest thing i learned when researching is that the season before they'd been able they were allowed to wear them away they weren't penalized at all like they are against the rules like I, oregon had a similar thing like they got taken away but like florida a m the year before i think 2015 they were allowed to wear them and then the next year like their very first game flag what we were allowed to wear these last year and hmm. so like for they had to like before every quarter, like they got a timeout taken away. So that was really weird. And I just, it just, it just looked unfinished. It looked like someone was, it looks, I think if they had finished it, like filled in the numbers, it would have been awesome. But it looked like someone had been like, oh no, my project is due in five minutes and just submitted. And they're like, okay, we'll take the C plus. It's fine. So on o- Florida A&M. Since we're on Oregon, can we, can we get a little circle back to these Oregon? When Oregon had jerseys that they looked like the mascot when they wore the, the, <laughs> the orange socks. socks and the <laughs> orange. I love those. I know people thought they sucked. I thought they were so funny. I, thought I think it's just, cool. They should wear them every week. I just, you're the ducks look like a duck. It's, I love it. I think, Dave, I think you said, like, I think you mentioned how, like, there was a, a jersey that you would have liked when you were 12. A lot of the Oregon mm-hmm. jerseys, like, when they started doing that, I was like, still in high school like you these are so cool look at all these colors it's just my eyes were just like color 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 and now i'm looking at it like oh that's too much i need sunglasses to watch this game yeah. so i i guess like there might be some 12 year old hitting us up in the comments like saying hey this isn't right and there's going to be an older person hitting us i'm like you see back in my day that nebraska uniform stood for class <laughs> we can't please them all yeah. oregon nope. needs to bring back the donald duck logo they they do not, yeah that's just it's just like the the o is it's it's fine it's just i know they have nike money but could they withstand a disney money lawsuit if they use those logos i have somewhere when i was like not nah, how i was like 11 and i was like i like oregon and i got an oregon duck pillow bed it's somewhere down it's in my house somewhere oh it's just it's just like a gopher. Yeah, you got. Yeah, I have the Oregon. Oh goodness. <laughs> yeah, and I have a Penn State one too somewhere. I have like a ton. Yeah, it's, it's somewhere. I'm, I don't want to get up and get it, but yeah. yeah fair enough. Like the, the yeah. yeah. All right, you people watching on YouTube, if you guys get this to ten thousand likes, Dave will find that uh, pillow and yeah, I will post a picture on my Twitter with me and my Oregon duck pillow pet, and okay, I ten- will. I'll sleep if if it gets ten thousand likes, I'll sleep with it in my bed till week one. All right, 10,000 likes on this video, people. Let's go. Yep. Goodness gracious. Yeah. <laughs> we, we went from talking about uniforms to pillow pets. Yeah, you know what? The beauty of the pod, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know how to transition out of that, so let's just say <laughs> um, we, we got into another discussion yesterday about bad quarterbacks. Now, we understand when we criticize these quarterbacks, we understand that they are still really good at what they do. However, compared to some other quarterbacks, they're not as good. So this main, the first question we're coming up with, who is the worst quarterback you'd take if you were a playoff contender for this upcoming season? So like, let's just like get like you're a, whatever that means to you, a contender, you don't have to put like a specific team. Maybe it's like NCAA, you just get like a 
blank slate and like you know this team's a playoff contender who is the worst quarterback you'd take um i have a random list here some of them are serious some of them are not uh i'll go to andrew well so dave can get his water uh andrew who do you got man this is a weird question and it's a good question because it gets us to talk about different quarterbacks but there's also that part of me that's like, okay, if I have to take someone bad, what traits do I value? I value the two biggest ones are accuracy and mobility. Can he create with his legs? And is he just an accurate passer? I feel like that one's kind of straightforward. So I went for my first one, uh, not bad by means, but not like a national championship winning quarterback. I went with Malik Cunningham from Louisville. You know, he can, Ooh. of course, okay. create with his legs he, he's got a decent arm no he's not gonna you know do everything he's not the heisman player he's not someone who can you know just throw for five thousand yards or throw for 50 touchdowns or run for 2500 yards as a quarterback no but he's a good quarterback can he create with offense yes can he put points on the board yes is he bad no is he great no, not really. I think he's a good quarterback. And then I also have on here Peyton Thorne from Michigan State. Another good – I mean – Solid, solid. Yeah, he's a solid quarterback. I don't want to say good. That's giving him too much credit. But if if he has to be throwing to, you know, 2019 Alabama receiver room, you know, all-time Notre Dame offensive line, this year's Georgia defense, I'm not tripping. I can see that. I like I like those. Good good reasoning. Dave, how about you, man? Sean Clifford. <laughs> I was actually going to cut him some slack this episode. I was going to say that he's – if you give me a healthy Sean Clifford and you guarantee he's not going to get hurt at all, let's say he was wearing armor but can still move, I – yeah. <laughs> if I he is like, Iron Man. <laughs> yeah, essentially. Yeah, if you give him an Iron Man suit. Because he does have – he if he sits in the pocket and he doesn't get nervous – which he does after losses, he can make good throws, but he also misses a ton of throws. So, um, yeah, I didn't really want to talk about uh, Clifford too much because this was kind of tough because it's not really bad quarterbacks that you want to find. You kind of want to find guys like Clifford, I'd say, that you think can win you games if you're a contender. And there are guys like Guarantano that you can literally not win a game with so I kind of didn't really take a bad quarter. I think Jay Kaner, I think he's still in the portal. I don't know if he's at Fresno State. I he think went back. that he went guy, back. he went back. Okay. Yeah, I yeah. think if you put him on a contending team and he is confident and he doesn't try to force balls and make too many crazy throws, can win you games because he is accurate. He can move a little bit. And he's, we saw that against, I think it was UCLA. He has that. He's cl- he's he's pretty he's got the clutch gene, and I think that he could definitely win you some games. I just had to adjust my notes because that reminded me of something. Um, I got four. Uh, two of them are serious. Uh, the other two are kind of serious. So I got, I got Grant Wells. Um, I believe he's now at Virginia Tech, and he'll be in a quarterback battle with I believe Jason Brown, another transfer in. Grant Wells. He started off. Uh, his season at Marshall in 2020, he was like on fire. Marshall was like seven to no or something. He had only like two interceptions and like a ton of touchdowns. And then they played Rice and then he was awful. And then he just disappeared, which was weird. And then last season he was up and down. But I still think, you know, he's pretty good. He's got a he's got a very nice deep ball. Like it's not like a rocket of an arm, but it's like it's one of those nice ones that go like up in the air and just arc and everything. It's, he's got a little movement. And like again, like he had he was pretty good with Marshall, and we'll see what he does at Virginia Tech. Another one, um, he's gotten better every single year, and he really did take a really nice jump at the, this last season. Uh DTR, Dorian Thompson Robinson. <laughs> like honestly, just because he's such like athletically, that dude is insane as an athlete. Yeah. Will he miss throws into like the third level of third, not third row, third level? Yes, he will. Will he sometimes just make like a really bad decision? Yes, he will. But mm. I think if you give him enough talent and just look at like, hey, man, rely on this talent. You don't have to rely on just Kyle. Phil- no offense to Kyle Phillips. You don't just have to rely on just Kyle Phillips. You got all these other guys. I think DTR will be, will be pretty good on a contender. This next one's a complete joke, but kind of a joke. Frank Gore Jr. 
when that guy <laughs> played quarterback for Southern yes. Miss. Yes. You know, honestly, oh. like he's got that weird. It's it's not he can throw the ball, but it's not like a release. You'd be coaching up anybody. Hey, but you know, quarterbacks are undefeated. Exactly. Frank and he Ford like. Jr. And he was like, he was like, had confidence on his throws, and he can run the ball like you can run the ball like Cam Newton did in 2010. I'm not comparing him to Cam Newton, but I'm just saying, you run the ball like 30 times a game with Franco Jr. You throw it like 10 times. You have a good team. You're going to the playoffs. He's efficient. And finally, I call this guy a, a quicker Jake Hayner. Maybe not as accurate, but this man is a national uh, champion. This is Stetson Bennett the fourth. <laughs> I believe. I'd say he could win you some games. Yeah. And this is the thing. Like, I don't like Stetson Bennett. Fourth. I think I've been clear about that in my tweets and any time I've been on the pod or anything. But you know what? He he has done it. And yes, it was like an all-time defense. But if you just put him on like just a random playoff contender and you just like told him to calm down a lot and not throw the ball too much, Stetson Bennett the fourth could lead your team as a not-so-good quarterback to the playoffs and win you a championship. And I'm kind of cheating there, but I'm kind of not because I still think as we transition into our next topic, that Stetson Bennett the fourth might be benched this upcoming season. Oof. Anyways, to transition to our next thing. This was brought up by Dave. This is uh, kind of going off with worst quarterback, not necessarily worst quarterbacks, focusing more on playoff contenders. Um, there are a lot of really good teams coming up this season. Of course, you got, your Ohio State, you got your Alabama, all those teams. But those teams are kind of set in stone what their quarterback is. Um, there are other teams, not so much. They got great talent on the round, but of course, you know, you need a quarterback to get you to the promised land, unless you're Georgia. So starting off, um, I'll open up to, to whoever's got, like, got something right away. Who is a possible or maybe a handful of contenders coming up for this season who aren't have some uncertainties at quarterback and you're really interested to see? And it might be like a quarterback paddle. It might just be like, oh, like their really good quarterback is gone. Or they might just be like a random contender that's popped up and you don't really know about the quarterback. So whoever wants to take it right away, uh, go for it. I mean, I can start real quick. Um, I am very curious in how DJ Ungulele is going to play this year. Mm -hmm. Because Clemson went from college football royalty with Watson into Lawrence. And then Ungalele comes in. He was the next top dog, and he was he wasn't good last year. Like he just seems scattered, and he just seems scared in the pocket sometimes. And he's one of the biggest dudes on the field. He just needs to make his throws. I mean, I'm pretty confident that he's going to have a much better season this year. But if he plays the same way, he might he might be like Kelly Bryant. He might he might get benched, and he might not be the starting quarterback anymore at Clemson. Yeah, I'll jump on that one real quick. Yeah, they've got a five-star Cade Klubnick is coming Cade, Cade in. And yeah, yeah mm -hmm. everyone really loves him. But DJU, like, I believe it was, it's so weird to me how he came in in relief and was, I know it's Boston College, but Boston College was still pretty decent. He threw for a million yards against them. He went on the road at Notre Dame, a really good Notre Dame defense. And he looked awesome in those two games. And then how after an entire offseason as QB1, he just looked off. Now, yeah. some people are saying they didn't have a Travis ETN to like give the ball to. Uh, they didn't have like a, uh, what's his name? An Amari Rogers or a Hunter Renfro, like a slot guy to get open. But just sometimes, like, it's just, even if you don't have those players, does DJ, you just look lost. And, and I know, like, they say the offensive line was bad, but sometimes just, you just got to look, he just never looked confident, like Dave was saying, like, he just looked scattered all over the place. So, I'll hand it off to Andrew, but yeah, I just need to jump in there real quick. That's that's one of mine I had highlighted. That's really interesting because in a kind of up, the ACC is up, up for grabs, so that's one where Clemson, especially after losing their offensive and defensive coordinator, that's one that'll be interesting to see. Mm -hmm. Andrew, who do you got? Yeah, I just wanted to touch on Clemson real quick. I am not at all confident in DJ Oyungalele. I think that if he doesn't win dang near every game, I think that Davo should really look into starting K club. Nick, I think he's uber talented. I think he is going to be the next big Clemson quarterback. And I don't know. Yeah. You can make all those 
uh, excuses. Oh, their wide receivers can't separate. Oh, their offensive line was bad. But you guys already said it. He just looked lost. His pocket presence was not there. His decision making was very errant, especially against Pitt. He had that, I think it was a shovel pass straight to a defender, straight to a defender, and he took it mm-hmm. back for six. Yep. Uh, just completely, that can't happen. Uh, so I'm a little upset because that was my pick, but uh, I also have in my notes, um, I don't think USC is a contender, but I have my doubts about Caleb Williams. Look, dude can run. The dude can run, but he isn't the most accurate passer. And I don't think that's really an outlandish statement. I think he definitely has his struggles there and we don't expect him to be a perfect quarterback. Yes, he can't always have all the mobility and all of the athleticism and all the accuracy. You got to, you know, have your, your downfalls on a few of those things, but I don't know. I just think that Caleb Williams at Oklahoma, he looked good in some moments, like he had that run against Texas, but then he also had some moments where he was like, Oh, what the heck are you doing? The number one thing that comes to my mind rolls out right against Kansas. He's got a free first down if he runs, but nope, he's decides to throw it into double coverage and it's picked. That stuff can't happen. If it happens, you're not a playoff contender. I don't think USC is a contender period this year, maybe next year, but with the talent that USC has brought in, I wouldn't be surprised if we're talking about them being really good. I just don't think Caleb Williams is that guy for them. And Josh already touched on it earlier, Stetson Bennett. I mean, if he is the starter for Georgia, I'm not confident in a, a repeat with how much defensive talent they lost, even though they still have a ton. Yeah. And on USC, Caleb Williams, I believe a lot of the things you're talking about, Andrew, were right. I, th- I, I, I personally, I chalk it up to him just being a freshman and like, also getting just thrown in like because Spencer Sanders was QB1. Um, I do like Caleb Williams. I love the physical tools are there. Let's see how he gets molded as it goes on. And he's going to be one of the rare quarterbacks because we haven't seen one recently in the um, Lincoln Riley. Well, recently within like three years in the Lincoln Riley system, who was there for more than a year. Like Baker was there for multiple years, but Kyler was there for just a year. Hurts was there for just a year. So it'll be, it'll be nice to see like Caleb Williams grow and, that is just that's a really good offense for any quarterback. So I think they'll be able to overcome um, Caleb Williams' limitations. But yeah, I could see what you're saying there, Andrew. Um, I want to. I have a bunch here, but I'm gonna just cut down to. I'm gonna make mine a little different. Cincinnati. I mean, are they a contender for this year? Again, I don't know. They did lose a lot of talent, kind of similar to Georgia. Well, Georgia's still a really good team. Cincinnati, though, we'll see what they can do. But it's really interesting because Evan Prater is the guy who everyone's talking up as saying is going to be the starter. But this guy just transferred in from Eastern Michigan, Ben Bryant. He was pretty good at Eastern Michigan, was solid. Thing is with Bryant, he was with Cincinnati for three years. And then he was a grad transfer to, um, to Eastern Michigan, played there for a year, and then he transferred back. So he's gotten, while he hasn't like been in the system for a year, he's been there. He was already there. He got QB1 reps under his belt and then he's back so that'll be interesting to see a nice veteran quarterback with experience under his belt he's coming back and i only really want to point this out is also because cameron mccoy he was a baseball player and football player he's quarterback at cincinnati he just transferred out where did he transfer to eastern michigan Hmm. this is something where i have a theory we'll see how it goes where this might be the coach is saying hey go transfer out come back when you're ready. Like we still like you just come back right now or for right now, just go away, get your, like get live reps in because we have too many good quarterbacks. Cause this is some like Western Kentucky did a kind of a similar thing where they brought Bailey Zappi, Stearns, the Kitley, all those guys, they brought them to Western Kentucky incarnate word. um, Cameron Warden, the head coach just went up to Washington state. This might be a similar thing where, Cincinnati is basically using Eastern Michigan as a minor league team. It's just a this is galaxy brain theory, but it's just something to keep an eye on because like, again, Stetson Bennett, he went to like a Juco and then he came back. There's, there's precedent for like guys going and then coming back. So just something to keep an eye out as it goes on with like transfer rules might be loosening up even more. It's just something interesting I thought of. And other teams like you guys mentioned Clemson, Georgia, Brock Vandergriff, Van, no, it's Van Dugriff, whatever his name is. That dude, that dude is, he looks awesome. Like you see him in warmups. He looks like a, he looks like the five-star prospect, but it's like, why does he never play? Then again, Kirby Smart has this history of a 
not playing <laughs> uh, really good quarterbacks, but whatever. Texas A&M, interesting one. Haynes King, Connor Wigman. How do you say his last name, guys? Wigman. Help me out. Wigman, thank you. Max Johnson, that's an interesting one. Mm-hmm. And this, you could go down the list, but it's, I just love talking about quarterbacks and we'll have more conversation. But yeah, do you guys have any that came off that you just have off the top of your head? Any other random ones before I might ramble on for something else? I mean, are we considering Michigan a contender this year? I don't think so. I mean, we can you, I, I mean, I consider Cincinnati because they were, I mean, you don't have to, but I mean, you can, because I considered Cincinnati because they were just there. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I just, always interesting. I just think they lost too much talent because they lost both of their top tier edge rushers. Mm-hmm. And that was like the, the kingpin of their defense was their pass rush. And I mean, we, we saw it all year. Their offense wasn't good unless Hassan Haskins was rolling or yeah. why am I yeah. blanking on the other running back's name? Corum. 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 Yeah. If either of them were going, their offense was good, but the quarterback play was lackluster to say the least. Uh, Been so, lackluster there for how many years now? I mean, the, the biggest quarterback name to come out of Michigan in the last like 10 years is Shea Patterson. Was Number one USFL pick in the USFL. Already. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah. I, I think yeah. Michigan's tough. Yeah, isn't because uh, do you guys think that Michigan because Alabama like constantly lose Alabama and Georgia they constantly lose a lot of talent and when like you look at returning talent rankings they're they're like in the teens they're not like they're like okay but they're always good because they're Alabama and Georgia uh, Ohio State's another example is Michigan at that point yet where we can say they lost the talent but it's okay they're bringing another four or five no. star no, or no yeah no. okay I think they might be getting there but I don't think. Again, like you guys are saying, I just don't think they have like defensively. They've always been awesome, but I think offensively they still have got a ways to go. I think this is Harbaugh's last season will be Harbaugh's best team ever at Michigan. I don't think there's much better than that. I don't think that he can reload. He can maybe get one edge rusher. Like losing Hutchinson and Ojabo is so tough for them. And is, is McCarthy's going to start for them this year? Or is it not? I would, ass- I would assume McCarthy. Yeah, that's what I was McCarthy, yeah. yeah. McCarthy he, has a lot of fans and with the coaches and players. He's again, he's he just is the he's Shea Patterson, but is more mobile and not as accurate, I feel like. I just don't see how they can reload like how Alabama and Georgia, Ohio State do every single year. I just don't I I they're gonna they're gonna lose three games this year, I think. And then minimum. Yeah, the narrative is going to go back to, oh, why did we keep hard? Why wish you went to the NFL, blah, blah, blah. But I just, yeah, I, I don't see them going very far this year. Yeah, I wrote an article on Harbaugh, and I think I think I took a, I think I was just being super positive. And I was like, yeah, this is a good, this is looking good. I think if I, was, if I can like sum it up a little bit better in my article, I think I'm trying to say is he's able to raise this, the floor of your program a lot. Like, again, like, Every single year he's been there, the defense has been really, really good. And like, yeah. that's, you could argue that's like a playoff contending defense. It's just the offense hasn't been there. And finally, the offense was kind of there this year. But then even then, they just got stonewalled by Georgia, which a lot of teams did. Yeah. But I don't, is, is he a ceiling raiser? I'm not sure about that. Which isn't that, like when he was at Stanford, that's not a bad thing. When he was with the 49ers and you can get like NFL talent and like really like cut down the roster, like, like runners up in the super bowl michigan though when you have to compete recruiting wise with all the top schools let alone like michigan state and ohio state like really close by i'm not again like what dave was saying i'm not sure if he can last year might have might have been it so yeah yeah sorry sorry wolverine fans if okay. you do if you do win though i mean come you can come find us and roast us preferably dave yeah you could roast me i yeah Penn State should have beat you last year, but you know, Sean, the beauty of Sean Clifford and James Franklin. Um, oh, yeah, I mean, also oh. Harbaugh, Harbaugh, I'll say something nice about him. He, he, I, the way I've always viewed him is he's an NFL coach coaching in college, and there's nothing wrong with that. But if Harbaugh had left, that sets the program back years because you can't find anybody that's Harbaugh. Like, you just can't. And, it's good for them that he came back, but again, I do think that he peaked. And 
it's going to be a long time till they beat Ohio State again. Yeah, I like that. Well, kind of a happy yet sad note to end on for Michigan <laughs> fans. It's it's kind of how Michigan's been for the past whatever years. Uh, yeah, but unless anyone else has some 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 to say, I believe we'll wrap it up. We're all good. Yeah, I think Michigan is hit their peak, and I don't know how. Like you already talked about, it. Harbaugh's not winning a natty there. That's very clear i think the only team in the big 10 right now that can win the natty is ohio state like no one else is remotely close to anything in, in alabama georgia AM, possibly if Until Drew Allen ends up, cooking. yeah i mean <laughs> dude, i don't know i love love drow dude i love i'm excited for him in two years but yeah yeah, yeah all right but, yep nothing else yeah um make sure to check out all of our stuff on social media uh, make sure to check out. We got a lot of draft stuff coming up, especially with the combine starting this week. Like it's really going. Um, but yeah, we got a lot of draft stuff going on. More off-season random topics. If you want to suggest topics to us, hit us up in wherever comment section, comment section of whatever post, wherever you can find it, YouTube or whatever social media. But yeah, I'm Josh. That was Dave. That's Andrew. Uh, this has been the Transporter Podcast presented by No Context CFB. Uh, see you next time.